In this video, we're going to look at the move e4 and the three most common responses that black plays against it. So black's most common response to e4 is c5. This is called the Sicilian defense. Black's idea is that he's just controlling this d4 square to try to prevent you from playing d4. You could still play it right now, um, but then after he captures and you recapture with your queen, he can bring his knight out and attack your queen and you end up wasting a move having to retreat your queen. So it's not advisable to um, play d4 immediately. So knight f3 is the best move, defending the d4 square so that you can play the pawn up the next move. So black's most common response at this point is to play d6 and he's just letting out his bishop and um, putting a pawn in the center and it, it also defends this, uh, this e5 move, which sometimes happens later. So now you can play d4 because now when he recaptures, you can recapture with your knight. So you don't have to waste time moving your queen around if he, if he attacks it now. And black's most common response is knight f6, attacking the pawn. And then you should play knight c3 to defend it. Now at this point, black's the main line for black is to play a6, which is kind of a weird looking move. But the idea is that a lot of times these knights end up going to this square and black is just simply preventing it right away with his, with his pawn. Also the bishop sometimes will go there and now you're, you'll just get captured. So what I recommend you play in this position is bishop g5 and black usually will play e6. And now you can simply play bishop e2 and after like bishop e7 you can just castle and this is a great position for white. You've got all your pieces developed, uh, your king is safe, you've castled before move 10, and you have good control of the center. So this is just a great start to a game, um, and that's the Sicilian defense. So black's second most common reply is e5, so he mirrors you with the same king pawn up two. And now you can play knight f3, uh, putting pressure on these central squares and attacking his pawn. So usually black will play knight c6 to defend it and also put more pressure on the same pawn. And now I recommend you play bishop c4. And so you're lining up on this f7 square. And a lot of cases that's very um, important. That's a very important thing to remember. And there's a lot of tactical tricks that you can find if you, if you pay attention to that. So black has two main replies. Um, bishop to c5 and knight to f6. So we'll look at this bishop to c5 line first. And what I recommend is c3, preparing to play d4. And usually black will play knight f6, and then you can follow it up with d4, getting a nice uh, nice center. So if he captures, you can recapture with your pawn. And now after bishop b4 check, you can block with your bishop. And there's one little trick here. It looks like this pawn on e4 is just um, free because nothing is defending it. So if black does capture it, you have this little trick you can play. So first you trade bishops, captures, captures. And now you can make use of this, this f7 uh, tactic that I talked about earlier. So you take it with check. And when he recaptures, you can play queen to b3, which forks these two pieces. So after like d5 to block the check, you just take his knight. And now all the material is even, so black has three, four, five, six pawns. You have three, four, five, six. Two pieces, two pieces, but his king has already moved, so he can no longer castle. And you can, and so that's kind of a, an advantage for white. And it it's also a very uh, dangerous position for black. You have ideas of bringing your knight to, to e5, threatening his king, um, and once you castle, you can bring your rook to e1, and um, black just has to be careful what he does. So this is a great start um, if you're white. So now let's back up and instead of bishop to c5, so this is the move we just looked at, the alternative is knight to f6. Now if black plays this, I recommend that you play knight to g5 to put pressure on this f7 square. So if you'll notice, there's the knight and the bishop are both attacking it, so your immediate threat is to simply capture it with your knight uh, and create a, for a fork, sorry about that, a fork on the queen and the rook. And 
at first glance, there's no easy way for Black to defend this. Um, a lot of beginner players, if they haven't seen this before, would be in trouble at this point. Now, the best move for Black is actually to play d5, and then after you capture, knight to a5 attacking the bishop is probably one of the, the more solid lines for Black. However, a lot of beginner players won't know that, and they'll just capture this pawn. So that's what I want to show you. If they do that, you can play what's called the fried liver attack, and it's a peace sacrifice. So you give up this knight, but you get a lot of compensation for it. So let's let's take a look at that. So you would capture on f7. You're creating a fork. So black is really forced to capture your knight back. And now you can play queen to f3, which is another fork. So you're attacking his king and his knight with check. So the only way he can save his knight is by bringing his king up to e6. Now, this is a terrible spot for Black's king to be, and this is the whole point of giving up your knight. You you lost a piece, but you've now essentially got Black's king almost to the center of the board, which is not good for Black. Now you're just looking for all kinds of ways to, to find a checkmate. And so usually you would follow it up with knight c3, putting pressure on this d5 knight, because it's pinned right now, so it can't move. And now you have three pieces, one, two, three, that are attacking it, and he only has two defending it. So black really has to play this knight back to add a third piece to defend it. And now you can follow it up with, um, I believe d4 is the best move. And it's it's kind of a complicated position and you'll need to practice it a little to get used to how this works. But the idea is that you're just looking for ways to get to find a checkmate. And so the point of d4 is like, yes, he can take your pawn, but you've let your bishop out now. Um, you can castle and, and your rook's gonna be coming over and black probably he's going to get checkmated very soon if he's not very, very careful. So that's the idea behind this opening. So Black's third and final most common reply to e4 is e6. This is called the French defense. And the idea is that he's not immediately preventing you from taking the center. So you can play d4, and this is what you should do. But then Black follows it up with d5. Now they're counterattacking the center, and they've defended this pawn with, with their other pawn. So that's the idea. The most common move for white is to play knight to c3. Now, I'm not going to recommend this because after you play knight to c3, black can play bishop to b4, and this annoying pin is just not fun to play with. Um, it's it's very tricky, and you have to be very careful. And so what I recommend for beginners is to play knight to d2. So the idea is the same. Both of these knight moves uh, defend your e4 pawn. The difference between knight d2 is that now if black plays bishop b4 to try to pin your knight, you can just simply block it with this c3. And he just wasted a move, he has to retreat his bishop, and you can continue on developing. So that's the idea behind um, knight to d2. And black's most common response is to play knight f6. And then you can play e5, gaining some space. And when he retreats, you can start developing your pieces. So like bishop to d3. Usually black will play c5, attacking your d4 pawn. And you can play c3 to defend it. And then black usually plays knight to c6, attacking it again. And then you can play knight to e2, defending it again. And on queen b6, one more piece attacking it. Now you can play knight to f3. And so it's all defended. And you can follow up by castling and eventually bringing this bishop maybe somewhere. Um, you know, Black has a problem that his bishop back here on c8 is just completely trapped. It's not doing anything. And so this is a, this is a good position for white, a good start to the game. You have more space than, than Black does. You have most of your pieces developed. You're going to be castling. And that's just a fine, um, a fine way to start the game. So there you have it. We looked at three ways to play e4. We looked at c5 for Black, e5, and e6. I hope that was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments below if that was too easy too hard, I went too slow, I went too fast. Um, if there's something that you had a question about, let me know, I will either do a video or just answer your question personally. But um, yeah, just let me know what you what you thought about that. I'm kind of learning how to do these opening videos and I'm not sure if I'm going into too much detail or not enough detail. So go ahead and leave me a comment. Let me know what you wanna see more of and what you liked and what you didn't like and I would really appreciate it. But uh, thanks for watching.